solving the housing crisis is multifaceted, runs far deeper than just build more council houses, build more private houses. In, uh, there's a really good podcast by Michael Walker called Crash Course, which goes into this in detail, and we will not be able to do it justice in the same way. But a key component of, of it is council house building. I've got a stat here. In the 1950s, councils on average built 147,000 council houses a year. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, the average was 1,400 a year. Hmm. And then like 40% of those houses are now private rents because of right to buy, thanks to, you guessed it, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> um, you know, I. it's all very well and good. Keir comes in and says to the council, you've got to build houses. But I think it kind of... They don't really have control over it. Like they need, they need to be allowed to borrow the money to build the houses. They need to be given grant funding, ideally, by central government in order to fund those things. I think also as well, talking about like money, should we invest in this? Should we invest in that? I, I, I think we should look at housing not as a cost, right? So it's, okay, we'll give you a grant of let's say I don't know, ten billion quid to the local authorities in order to build houses. You will get that money back mm. in in health outcomes, mm. in general well being, in in uh, reduced levels of crime, in all of these things I I think you and I talk about this quite often on the desk about mental health and how people just uh, it's oh yeah man all these dudes are so unhappy like we're all fucking yeah. miserable and it's oh well yeah, have you considered that like everyone's paying like 50% of their income on like a rent on, on, a yeah, rented, yeah. on a rented property like they don't have housing security their lives aren't great and it's like why is everyone so upset yeah it's not it's not like it's, it's well, when, I, when I first joined politics show we used to talk about people uh, this, this is kind of largely irrelevant as a cultural observation now <laughs> but, um, <laughs> push through it but um, people don't need Dr Alex remember when Dr Alex was like the mental health ambassador for the government mm. and I felt quite bad for him because he's like has quite a personal relationship with men's mental health because I think his, his brother died by suicide yeah. and so he I think he was really delighted to, to be in this position but he was set up to fail because mm. an ambassador for mental health to the government can achieve sweet fuck all mm. and what would actually really have helped men's mental health is literally like a better quality of life like being able to buy a home move out of your parents like not spend like the, you spend less money on mortgage and get to see your friends and go for a pint and then you can talk about your mental health like it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, such, it's such like it's such easy crutch bollocks and then, then also I suppose as well this is just a, a rant about the discussion of how we talk about mental health in this country but like imagine like the three of us now we have a very good relationship if like we're like oh so how are you man like oh I'm, I'm currently experiencing a psychotic episode what, what are you two going to do? Mm -hmm. And like, well, like no, no one is equipped to actually deal with the genuine, horrific side of mental health. It's not just like, it's okay to not be okay. Kind of up to a certain point, if you're dealing with like anxiety or very mild depression, it's not okay to be currently engaged in psychosis <laughs> and not to be hospitalized. <laughs> mm. I think that's like, I think it's a really important yeah, distinction. I agree. And also, uh, this is a slightly weird anecdote that may or may not make the final edit, but I was <laughs> uh, I was visiting my grandmother in her in her care home this weekend. And I said, I walked in, I said to the receptionist, oh, you're, you're okay, you're right. And she went, no, I've been better. I said, oh, what's wrong? She's like, hay fever started, terrible. <laughs> And I just, I, I just, you know what? When I asked you if you're okay, I didn't actually want you to tell me that. <laughs> you're like, part of the problem. I'm, I'm sorry, you're part of the problem. I'm sorry, Sharon. I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. I've hey, got hay fever hey, as well. You must be grasses. I must be trees. <laughs> like, mine hasn't kicked in yet. I don't give a shit. Like, where's my grandma? I want to go see her. I want to go see her. Let me in. <laughs> Shut hay up. fever is not a mental health issue. <laughs> no. But I just, what, I, what I'm trying to get at is like when you... <clears throat> When you like the the whole "Are you okay, mate? Are you not okay?" It's just bullshit. It's like mm. no 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 one seriously thinks like when I say to you, Ed, uh, when you come in, in the morning, uh, how are you? And you go, Yeah, I'm okay. That I'm gonna go, No, no, how are you really? You know, it's it, that's not when it happens. It's when you your meaningful relationships, proper support network, and you talk about these things. It's such a fucking cliche that. I think that men aren't able to talk about their feelings. It's just you don't have a relationship with a man strong enough where he feels confident to talk to you about it. So you think men don't talk about their feelings. I just don't think it's true. And also, I just think like there's nowhere to go. I think your point about psychosis is right. It's sort of like, you know, I've had mates who are like having a, a right mare and they sort of come to me and they'll ring me and I'll do the best I can. But I, I am not a practitioner. Mm. Right? I'm an idiot with a phone who can like, who can <laughs> be like, like a good description of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like, so got these like, jobs. Have you considered going to Superstore? 
<laughs> so I mean, like, I'll get a bag in. Do you know like, what you need? <laughs> MDMA. That was so, I've seen the studies, the microdosing, apparently it works, yeah, so like, let's just... I'll just give you a tiny bit of ketamine and it'll uh, be fine. Can, 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 can you microdose this, I think? Would be... I mean, trying to microdose in the fucking is, red uh, light of Is Superstore. a key a microdose? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, I think you're right. And it, it speaks to this individualization yes. of yes. men's health. And it's like, yeah, it is correct that we should be having more conversations. And to a certain extent, like, when we met earlier, you were like, how are you? And I was like, ah, Bill. And it's like, oh, that shit. And like, you know, it would be nice to be able to be like, oh, how you think? Oh, a little bit, like, a little bit blue, a little bit sad, mm. etc. And like that, we should be talking more like that. And we should be engaging with each other more like that. But the problem comes is when it's like slightly more, you know, if I turned up and was like, actually, I've got TB. <laughs> You'd be like, okay, firstly, <laughs> could you stand over there? Uh. And secondly, have you considered going to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you just walking around with a broken arm and asking your friends to help. And it's just like, that's the case, isn't it? It's like what we don't... like. And more and more people are walking around with like metaphorical broken arms or metaphorical TB because it's shit. This country sucks. It's a bad place to live. And there is nothing on the horizon... Like, no offering from Keir Starmer, no amount of being like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with <laughs> the leaders of 22 <laughs> councils and I'm going to tell them <laughs> that they should maybe build free homes. And I'm like, okay, fucking sick, mate. But I went down, for example, last week to Eastbourne. We're doing a whole new like series of, um, about the cost of living crisis. And I went down to Eastbourne, went to a food bank there and talked to them about it and was like, what's going on? Because they happen to have like the highest per capita in the whole country of food parcels. And I was like, what, you know, what is it? Like, who are you, who are you seeing coming in? And we were talking about it and they were like, you know, what we are seeing more and more is particularly like, you know, single parents or, but more and more like across the entirety of the population are people in completely intractable positions. Like the idea of a food bank is to make sure people don't have to use a food bank, right? So mm. you come in, you, you're there for an emergency, you're a stopgap, and then you can pivot them over to this resource, this resource, this resource. They're not there. Mm. They don't exist. And that's like them literally maxing out the council. So if Keir Starmer wants councils to help, he needs to empower councils to do that by having our policy would be nice. You know what I mean? Like a something. Single delicious policy. Like yeah. Some kind of something that looks on a national level and recognizes. I mean, he's set, he's just set himself up to fail by talking, by bringing in, I mean, we were joking about it earlier, but, you know, by bringing in these national issues in a council, because part of the problem with the the collapse of the Labour vote in 2019, part of the reason for that is because these communities have had Labour councils for so long and they have not seen any change. And part of that is because the council has been shit and complacent. They haven't been engaged in the community, but also because they have been Labour councils operating under an austerity Tory coalition and then government. Mm. And people don't understand, or like a lot of people don't understand like the delineation because at what point would you like yeah, yeah, most yeah. people have friends and like have sex and like you know drink they're not like freaks like us <laughs> <laughs> you know about all of this shit and i still don't really yeah yeah, yeah. Sort of vibes it. so it's just like obviously so if keir starmer is being like don't worry vote for the council what we'll do is we'll sort out the hospital we're going to sort out inflation we're going to do this they can't fucking do it what mm. can do it is the national labor party yeah. a a government having policies that's not, oh, well, freeze bills. <laughs> Mate, give me a fucking break. <laughs>